here we are back in our main finds room in Wessex Archaeology Portway House. Okay, so this is um, Romana British Black Burnished Ware Pottery, uh, so called because it is usually sort of a greyish, uh, dark brown or black, and um, often burnished, so it's been very well polished. Um, in this case, on the inside, it's a bowl, um, and usually on, on the outside, um, often decorated with um, burnished lines. So here are some of the pots that we've taken out of the boxes we've just collected from the store. The New Forest pottery industry began production around somewhere between AD 250 and 270. We have one of these very interesting situations where the inhabitants of the British Isles didn't suddenly change culture, they didn't suddenly become Roman. Put their toes on and move into a villa. No, sadly not. <laughs> <laughs> the colour um, is to do with the, the iron in the clay. Um, Pool Harbour has a very, very rich source of um, clays that potters could um, choose from. Some examples of the different types of clays here. This is a white firing clay from Round Island, one of the islands within Pool Harbour. This is a, a type of clay known as ball clay. Ball clays are very fine um, kaolinitic sedimentary clays and they occur in very few places in the world. Um, but we also have these more red firing clays which tend to be quite sandy um, and you find these all around the harbour and the Isle of Purbeck as well. It's bright green. I mean we're used to seeing green pottery in the medieval period mm. but this is this is the same Roman period. This is considerably earlier. These are first century AD. They are lead glazed. Okay. They come from Saint-Rémy in France and were mostly little cups and flagons, sometimes with moulded decoration, but beautiful colour. Very, very, very fine. fine. Very fine. Very fine. So these are thrown, aren't they? Yes, are those are wheel thrown. Every thrown pot has to be centred before the clay can actually be thrown. So prepare your clay by kneading and wedging and with the correct size lump of clay got usually by weight for the size of the pot you want to make. Throw the clay down onto the wheel head with the wheel going anti-clockwise and start to centre it by first of all coning the lump of clay. These pots, the body of which is uh, an earthenware clay, not terracotta, and it could have been fired to a much higher temperature if they'd had the ability to do that. But as they are only fired to about 900, between 900 and 1000 degrees, they remain porous. They didn't have the ability to make them watertight, so any liquid or any food put into these would contain for many, many years the elements of that food, so it would be possible to tell what these people have been consuming. Do we, can we find out what would be in these jars? We could through chemical analysis of residues that have been absorbed into them. We don't generally do that except part of research projects. It's not standard because it is an expensive and destructive, destructive. technique. Some of the pots also have painted decoration. This one, for example, has what look like wheels, maybe symbols of the god Fortuna and wheels of fortune. Nowadays, we use a wax resist to get a design like that. I don't know what the early potter used, but it's some kind of resistant material so that when the pot was dipped into the glaze, having had the design applied, the glaze on the slip didn't actually adhere to where the wax or whatever the resist material was. Some of the pots from the cemetery are also marked. Their owners have marked the bottoms of the pots. This one with a cross and this one with a T. What I will also do is put my initials on the bottom so that when somebody digs it up in a thousand years time they will say somebody with the initials MF made this. That's all they will know about me. What do you enjoy about pottery? What, what makes you tick in your work? 
The best thing for me is sticking the pieces back together. <laughs> I love that. To actually rejoin friends after 1600 years and to see the shapes. Mm. See it all come back together. Yeah, yeah, that's the very definitely the best piece. Mm. Other things are interesting. Uh, I like the way some of the vessels have been repaired, for example. At the time? At the time, yes, in antiquity. And you can see that? Yes. Either by drilling small holes and putting metal rivets, generally lead rivets, through the holes. Or even better, when you have glue repairs. I like that pottery shows us that, that people, people are fundamentally the same. Yeah, very yeah. definitely. That's really nice.